everyone, welcome to another Average Angler. Another match fishing video today. We are once again at Acorn on a Tuesday Affordable, and for those eagle eyed amongst you, you will see that once again, somehow, despite it being statistically impossible, I managed to have drawn peg 21 again. So, with that in mind, I'm, just, I'm going to go straight out and start, start slapping the rig, uh, tapping a rig like I did before, and see if I can catch tapping straight away. It's about 16 or 17 anglers turned up today, don't we? So it's quite windy. So I'm just going to try my tapping approach and see what happens. I need to put another section on a little bit further. Just so I'm tapping past the feed. Um, I um, threw this peg today and I weren't sure whether I was going to fish for silvers up a carp. I weren't sure with the weather changing a little bit whether these fish would be up in the water like they have been. Um, but then I got to the peg and I saw a fish swirling and I just felt like well, the fish are still there the swirling and their feed's gone in so they're definitely still up in the water even though you know the weather would have you believe that perhaps these fish weren't going to be up in the water like they have been but that's you know It's rattling in this pole section. I don't know what it is. It's really annoying. I might have to change this top gear. It's going to keep rattling like this. Right, guys. So that's what we're going to do. We're here again at Acord. I don't. I don't blame this. You've already um, turned the video off because you're sick of seeing Pig Twenty One. There's nothing I can do about it. If I turn up here and I draw peg 21, I'll turn up here and I draw peg 21. Um, that is just how it is. Um, if I could, if I could chuck me and cast it, if I could catapult properly, that would be nice. I don't currently understand why my pole is rattling so much, but it is. Doesn't seem to be anything in it to rattle. The elastic's tight. And there we are, first one of the day. So, looks like it is going to work again today. Give me a little feed. <clears throat> nice little ghosty. Not 
big ghosty actually. Just, just nicked like I could have easily pulled off him. I'm expecting to weigh him on with the scars today. Six, six that is. Still another, still another six pound. I don't, I don't think I've got any clicker out yet. So I'm a little bit behind on the setup today because of, uh, I don't know why actually, just faffing about. Yeah, just faffing about and I'm a little bit behind. But there we are. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're away. I'm not going to do a whole lot of filming of this, guys, because, you know, if you want to watch how I do this, just watch my previous couple of videos here and peg 22. But, well, sorry, peg 21 when I was on this, my previous videos. And um, you know, it's pretty much the same, but it's a little tiny shallow rig. Like that. Tap, tap, tap. Big cop comes along, grabs it. In between. Shipping out. Just feed the fire bank so that we can try and catch some fish slurping that grass over there again. What I'm hoping to improve on this week is a better finish. So last week, I came third. I feel like I could have got second. Um... But um, it didn't happen because I couldn't, I didn't finish very well. So what I'm hoping to do this week is have a better finish. So I've got some margin rigs and some shorter, short rigs for fishing down the slope. So if the fish decide to really ever go short, I'll be able to watch a lot of people fish short here now. So I'll be able to just watch what they're doing. Um, and. If they look like they're starting to catch well short, I'll just start priming that line and drop on it and see if I can finish better than I did last time. Because definitely shallow fishing seems to fade towards the end of matches. It seems to be better for early and late in the match shallow fishing and then you want to be coming short down the edge. But when you're catching, it's hard to come off them, but you've got to have that mental strength to say, right, let's come off them. So hopefully, I'm going to have that mental strength today. Right then, guys, on the one hour update. Just keeping the pole back for a second because I've not caught much slap in the last couple of minutes. Or oh, I've not had much interest down the middle. So I'm uh, just holding the pole back a second while I uh, refeed some lines. Um, a one hour, so just over an hour in, 25 pound on the clicker. Which is probably about 23 pound. Um, some fish down the middle now, I can see them. So, what we've been doing is just alternating between the, the swim, the swim across where we're pinging, where we're pinging bait. So I swim across, sorry, I'm just can't concentrate. Swinging, pinging hard pellets across into the grass. I've had a couple of fish from over there and and um, tapping on a, on a short rig down the middle and I've had a couple of fish there. Um, I, thought, I think I've had four fish for 20, for 20 odd pounds. So, you know, at this rate, I mean, that's, you know, that's 25 pound and that's 20 odd pound an hour. So, Six hours, that's 120 pounds, so we're doing all right. Um, so we just got to keep tapping up, ticking away at that rate, because we're not catching a lot of fish, but the fish are a good, fish that we are catching are a good stamp. Right, guys, we're just over two hours, two hours and 15 minutes in. And I've got around about 50 pounds, I'd say, maybe just over 50. Um, still doing the same. Still just tapping down the middle, going over and picking up odd fish in the grass. It seems the same today as it was last time, and the bigger fish coming down the middle. 
slower, even smaller fish are coming across quicker. But the smaller fish across are only really doable when the wind stops blowing. You have to be you have to be able to really push the rig right into the little holes today. And you can see the fish over there, but as soon as the wind gets up, starts blowing your pole tip around, you just end up in a proper mess. What I'm finding as well is you seem to be able to catch one or two fish slapping down the middle like I'm doing now and then. If you can see that guys, but you can catch one or two fish slapping down the middle. And then, or not slapping, tapping. Slapping is when you flip the rig over, tapping is when you tap with a pole. Um, you catch a couple doing this and then they're gone again. They're not as aggressive as they have been in the past. Um, and then, so I'm having to rest it quite quickly. So if I don't get a fish on this in the next minute or two, I should probably be over and having a look in the in the grass over because I can see there are fish mooching about over there where I've been pinging the hard pellets into the grass <coughs> where the duck is. Hello everyone, we're on a three hour update, just over three hours, three and a quarter to be precise. So we're halfway through the match just over and we've got and about 75 pounds, I'd say. The tapping down the middle has become better than the slurpers in the grass. The slurpers in the grass have become almost impossible to catch. They're still there, but I can't seem to, I can't seem to hook one. The tappers down the middle. I'm having to be quite aggressive with my tapping and just wait. But I mean, you can see the they got you can see the fish over on the far bank. I can see them right now. They're they're really there. They really want to get involved. But I don't feel like I can't get tight enough at the minute. It's not. I cleaned it all up when I went over there so that I can get the rig tight to the grass, but it's like the ducks have been in, the fish have been in, it's just messy again. There we are, there's, there's an example of what's happening with attacking the yard. Just having it a bit now. It just seems to be best at the minute if I just don't stop tapping. Sometimes it's better if I stop, sometimes it's better if I uh, just keep tapping, but at the moment, just to keep tapping seems to be getting the fish, although the fish are a little bit smaller. It's an F1, I think, this one. A couple of F1s I've had now. No, it's not an F1, it's just a cart. Just a little cart, two pound or so, probably, I'd say. Yep. So, yeah, we're in the rounds of about 80 pounds halfway through the match, which puts us on a walk of a rate for 160 which is really good whether we'll keep catching at this rate it's obviously it's up and down with shallow fishing like it always is and uh, you just never know to change that hook length that hook i think it's looking to me like it's opened that ever so slightly Bend it back a minute while I uh, see if I can catch another one before I think about that. It's quite a lot of fish there, that hook. So as we expected, I've just started, literally just started to throw a few, a few pellets down this edge, but not very accurately. As you can see, that was rubbish. I'm going to have to start putting the pot on, I think, if I'm going to do that so windy it's almost impossible to throw any sort of distance with accuracy it's right over there in the reeds now there's like four or five carp just sucking away there's going mad over there i'm in a field day maybe that's the problem that's why i probably can't catch them because they're just so preoccupied with what's in the in the grass that they're not in any way interested in what's on my hook who knows 
Oh, again, oh, this, this, this is hotting up a little bit now, this uh, shallow swim. I think it's probably not a big fish, but you never know until you get in close in. We'll use a better one, that's what we want. They're the ones we want. Pulled out there, that's not handy. What was he way? He's not jumping around. Oh. Well, there's your indestructible, there's your indestructible floats, total nonsense, this indestructible float malarkey, right, I'm going to have to type another rig, so there we are, we've definitely over 80 pound now, just over three and a half hours, well, just about three and a half hours, so catch you up for an update later. All right guys, four hours. Four hour update, four hours in, two hours to go. I've got two nets that I think I've got close to 50 in and one net with about 20 in, so I'm on what, 120, I'm probably on about 110, somewhere between 110 and 120 at best. Maybe overestimating slightly. Still catching best, oh, on this line. Hopefully you got that. <laughs> Been up and down this line, so when the small ones are there, it goes really quick. And the big, when the big ones are there, it takes a long time and then get a, a nice one so I've had a I've had a, I've had a lot of small ones from down the middle in the last um in the last 45 minutes or so but um I can't seem to keep the big ones coming but um this one's um, this one feels like it's once it's not massive but it's uh like a it's not a little two pound I don't think didn't want to come back from uh, in the swim. I'm still feeding over, but I haven't gone over there for ages. The carp are still there, and I'm, st and I'm still feeding down my right hand margin, but I haven't gone down there either. Whilst this keeps going, I'm going to stick on it. This is a nice little three or four pounder, you see, it's what we want. Um, while this is still going round, I'm just going to, or should I say, still keeps going under, and this float still keeps going under, I'm just going to stick on this. Because I don't think anything shorter than is going to be quicker than this anyway. And the stamper fish is oh, that's a nice one. The stamper fish is decent, you know, getting a mixture of fish. So, are we going to catch these? <coughs> so I'm trying to get them in too quick, don't you? I'm going to get a disgorge running because every time I touch them, you don't like it. I'll just get the discord when he's done. It's just, it's just, it's not quite six pound that fish, but I'm going to click six just to be safe. Which puts me on 35 on this clicker, and I've done one clicker to 49 and one clicker to 48, but. They'll be they'll be less than that because that's what how it's been working with this uh, right way. It's just been keeping me below the below the figure I think I'm at. So that's good. Check out my little float. See the rubbers on the float there. They're actually um, tungsten tubing that the cart boys use. So I've put just enough tungsten tubing on that float to load it, and then I've cut the rest of the stem off to keep it as short as possible. These are the pressed and tough tough sort of durable floats that they make. Um, I'm, it's actually a float I messed, up, I messed about making the other day at home with a view to doing some slapping but at the moment here at Acorn tapping certainly seems to be better than slapping so I'm not doing a lot of slapping at the moment maybe in the up and coming events I've got that shit late which will be which will be on this channel soon I've got 
a series of five or six matches, like a league, Matt Corpin's league. Um, coming up soon, and um, there might be a bit of slapping on there, so I'll give it a chance, be a chance to test that float out and see how it works. It's plenty good. I'll do a video on it, but if it's crap, then there's no point. So the wind's up and down at the minute, the wind's pretty mild, um, which is good. And then it'll go really, really choppy. And I find it hard to, harder to get a bite when it's super choppy. When it's a little ripple like this, it seems to be better. Um, when it's really choppy, what I found is you have to just tap a lot harder, but make a lot more commotion. And I think it might be because the surface is already making a lot of commotion and it might drown out the noise of the tap, of a gentle tap. Um, and so when you just thrash it a bit more, and it definitely seems to work. Sometimes if you ain't had a bite, it, it, you can get away with thrashing it like that. And it'll sometimes get you, a, it'll get a fish interested. Yeah, so I'm using this float, be, an emer not, be, not by design really for this. I'll normally have a little dibber, but as you saw earlier, um, it hook pulled out of a fish and um, the rig, just as it was netting it and the, and the float hit the pole and smashed it to bits so I had this all kind of already made up for slapping so I've just shortened it rather than getting another rig out and messing about as I say slapping hasn't been of any use today for whatever reason the wind's getting up again now Right guys, coming into the last hour now. I'm still fishing, I'm still feeding out down the uh, down the middle and that, but it's just not been, it's just not happened for the last 20 minutes or so. So where I've been feeding this margin line, I came down and came down on it, and I had two two quick fishing two puts on, on the expander over the top of where I've been feeding the yard six mils but then it went funny so I've just come off it and gone down the slope where I'd also fed a couple six mils big couple six mils about 20 minutes ago but just foul looking fish over that which seems like the fish are off the deck there and um, so I've come back up here where it's a bit shallower because I think that's where they probably want to be I'm just going to try plopping the rig in Seems like they've been. Maybe they'll be uh, taking it on the drop. not as good as I was hoping it was going to be. Oh, I've got it straight away. So there we are, plop it in, certainly seems to help. Small fish this one. It's getting around in front of me under control. And I shall refeed. I should try again. Maybe this one, just keep feeding that line out there as well. There's loads of these down here and they're eating them, and we've got to start putting some bait in to keep, these, keep all these fish happy. I've gone onto the hard pellet because I want to make a plot with the bait. Chucking it in there, there. Not going to bother clicking in, using your pad. So now I'll just chuck that bait in into the swim. So hopefully, as soon as we go back in, we'll be we'll be laughing again, and we can just plop plop the rig in.
reasonably flat from sort of where the float is here to sort of um, where the pole tip is here to where the pole tip is there. It's reasonably flat. Apart from probably an inch difference in depth. So I'm going to worry too much. I'm throwing the pellets in an area because I can't throw very accurately in this wind at this distance. I can't throw that accurately anyway, but in this wind. I'm not even going to plop it down because the pellet needs to fall straight down on where it land, where it goes in so the fish can find it. There we are. That seems to have improved the situation somewhat, so I'm going to hook one. Read again. Need a handful in that zone. This might be a better fish. If it's not better, it's soon. It's going to be stronger. So that was good. I'll just turn the cameras on just as I sort of sorted out this edge. So it's nice to have two fish and two puts. You can just get. So this is what my match lacked last time. You know, I'm on the third net. So I should have a I'm only four nets, so I should have 120 in the bag. But if then the last hour dies, I might, you know, I might be able to do 30 pounds in this last hour. And that gives me 150, which is a whole lot more. There's a lot of guys that catch a lot of fish late here, short down the edge, and they're very good at it. So if I can if I've already got a head start on them, I don't have to be quite as good as them at the end. I've just got to keep ahead of them. Stick with that weight again because he's all right. I'll do the same again. It seems, it seems to be best just to plop it straight down. Oops. Yeah, tangled, untangled. Let's just feed out there just in case we've got to go out there again. Going quick now, look at this guys. If we can finish like this, we'll probably put another might have to get another net out. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, these things very quickly just stop just as fast as they start. Small fish, but they're consistent. They're coming in, all, you know, they're coming in every chuck. Two or three pounders. I thought he'd had me banned then. I thought he was had me banned. I was going to try. 